Well, when it comes to the presence of God, ooh, God wants to say some things. I got a word for you today. Acts chapter 4. Now, Lord, look on their threats. They had just been... They had just been, before the Jewish Sanhedrin, they they had just been um, attacked for their stance and for their calling before the Lord to speak up for Jesus. And so they got together and now they're praying, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. How many of you know it's proper to pray for boldness? And it says, now, Lord, see all that? It says now in verse 30, by stretching out your hand, notice they're praying God to do something. Stretch out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Now this comes after that they were persecuted for a miracle taking place and what they do? They turned around got together with people who were going to pray boldly with them, amen, their own company and there's nothing like getting together and praying with people that's in the same camp that you are that believes the same things, amen. And so they're praying, Lord, they're persecuting us for a miracle to take place. Lord, we pray for boldness and we pray, Lord God, for more miracles. We pray that you would do signs and wonders, that you would heal, amen, in the name of your holy servant, King James says, your holy child, Jesus. In verse 31, and when they had prayed, get this, church, this is what we want to focus on. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Woo! And they were all filled, we could say refilled, with the Holy Spirit because we leak, we constantly need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it says they spoke the word of God with boldness. Well, isn't that what they were praying for? Signs and wonders, boldness, healings. And it goes on and talks about more miracles than that took place after this. Now listen, today we're going to look at the third major uh, 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 attribute of God. We looked at God as omniscient, God all-knowing, all-seeing. God's omnipotent, all-powerful. And today, that God is omnipresent. And so what we want to focus on first today, we have this up here, and I want you to get this, write it down if you can, is we want to have the Lord give us a revelation on how to pursue God in such a way to experience His, and and this is a word that's used often, so I'm going to use it, okay? Is his manifested presence. The manifested presence of God. When you think of the word manifested, you think about something that's shown up. Something that's been revealed. Amen. So we talk about the presence of God. We want God to show up. Amen. I believe believe we're a church and you're a people that you're with me, man. It's like, man, I just don't want to get together and say I'm a believer. I want to see God show up. I want to see what Jesus said. If two or more gathered in my name, praise God, that's believing in his name. Not just I have the name of Christian. I'm a Christian. So no, it's like in faith, but are gathered in my name. Jesus said, there am I. I'm going to show up. Glory to God. And when God shows up, Man, I tell you, the book of Acts, if you haven't read through the book of Acts recently, or if you've never read through the book of Acts, now's the time to do it. Glory to God. We're living in a day and day and age. It begins with talking about the prophet of Joel, uh, the beginning of the the, uh, fulfillment of that, God pouring out his spirit. Now listen, God pouring out his spirit is so that we can experience a right now God. Hallelujah. That God would manifest himself, that he would break through. Now, how many of you know some stories in the Old Testament, for example, uh, that you would find this at times, that that they would pray, and the fire, a fire from, from heaven would shoot down and burn up the sacrifice. That's God breaking through. 
Glory to God. I love it too when they would dedicate the tabernacle, they would dedicate the temple. It says while they were dedicating this, they're praying, worshiping God. It says that a cloud moved in that was the, the visible, tangible, manifest presence of God. Many have termed this today the Shekinah glory of God. Moved in. And it would say things like this. Moses and Aaron and the priests could not go in to minister. Solomon at the, the dedication of the temple, same thing. The priests could not enter because God showed up. Woo, hallelujah. Now, praise God. I'm glad that you're here, and I hope you're glad that I'm here. But we're pretty little in the scheme of things. What's most important is we want God to be here. We want God to show up in a real, manifested tangible way in the early church it says god showed up and he shook the building glory to god i remember reading some some accounts for example of revivals around the world and and, and uh, throughout the history of pentecost over the last hundred years sometimes while believers were gathered it looked like from the outside that the building was on fire and there was cases where they would call the fire department to come and they come rushing and they get there and well, that's a fire, but it's not a fire. Nothing's being burned up. You know, when Moses, when, when, when Moses was, was out, uh, you know, in the backside of a desert somewhere, it says God showed up, and he showed up in a burning bush. What is that? It's God manifesting himself. He's breaking through. Ooh, glory to God. I want you to know God can do that for you and me. Jesus, once again, promised that it would happen if we gathered, and it's implied that if we gathered in faith in his name. Glory to God. Not that, oh, aren't we so, aren't we so poor little miserable Christians, or, or oh, the devil's just beating us around, or we're just not noticed. No, we know that God sees us through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I'm going to make sure I'm there. Hallelujah. And things are going to happen. Hallelujah. How many of you want things to happen? Now, we believe here at Faith Journey Church, and I hope some of you that are watching online, you believe the same thing. And if you're in a church that doesn't, you need to come to a church like ours. Amen. <laughs> it is that uh, when, when, when we gather together, God wants to do stuff, and that God can do more in a moment of time that we could never do in days and days and years. Amen. Now, we believe in things that we can do things in the natural to help. We believe, for example, we believe in sometimes people need some professional counseling. And we would encourage that in situations. And we believe the same thing. Sometimes people need a professional doctor, need medical treatment. We're not against that. But we know this, that God can do something when the medical doctor says, I can't do anything. It's incurable. And God can do things when the, the psychiatrist or psychologist is playing around with our minds and trying to get us to a, a stable place emotionally, intellectually, rationally, and, and uh, in our soul and all that type of stuff, is that God can do what they could never do. See, all these things can help, and sometimes they can help and save our lives. It'd be great. It's great to be able to go to a medical doctor and they can help us so that we don't die. God does not want us to die. He wants us to live. Praise God. Live and continue to grow and walk in higher things in God. Amen. But we know this, that God can do more in a moment of time. If there's a breakthrough time. Hallelujah. I believe that with you, it's the same with me. That one of the greatest heartaches is that you gather in any gathering, church service, whatever. And it just doesn't seem like God broke through. It's like, Lord, we want you to break through. I, I so oftentimes pray, Lord, if you don't anoint me, there's no reason for me to get up behind that pulpit. Because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's God's tangible anointing. By the way, isn't it great to have Gabby blessing us? Amen. She's anointing. She's anointed and hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's the beginning. Amen. But we want God to break through. No one wants to waste their time. Nothing worse than going to a church service and you go out, you go out you, the same. What's even worse, you go out worse than what you were. 
Man, you want to have an encounter with God. Amen. So pursuing God's manifested presence. That's what happened there. The place was shaken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what? They were shaken. You know, I, I realized this a long time ago. I've been in the ministry too many years. I know much longer than what my youthful age looks. <laughs> but I cannot change anybody. And when God comes and shakes things, you know, I think, well, maybe I, I, can, I, can, I can help stir them up. Well, you know what? It's God who stirs, and he'll help us stir ourselves. As Paul said to Timothy, stir yourselves up. Praise God. But man, I pray, oh, shake some buildings, but most importantly, shake people. Woo, shake us. What do you mean shake us? It means shake out some of that stuff that's not pleasing in his sight. Shake out that stuff that maybe we're kind of constantly dealing with, chronic things and chronic problems. Let's shake it out. Glory we'll to God. And then, oh, praise God, a greater transformation is made. God, how? How? God's manifested presence. You get that? That's what we want. That's what we desire. How do we get there? How do we get there? That's your kind of glory. Hallelujah. Whether we see it or not. Or as it says in the book of Ezekiel at the end, when it talks about and gives another name of Jehovah, Jehovah Shema, the God who is there. Woo, hallelujah. Oftentimes when I'm praying, especially when I'm praying alone, I might be praying in, uh, in the facility or wherever over the years, I say, Lord, let this be uh, Bethel or Bethel, a house of God. I like Jacob, man. The Bible says that Jacob went on a journey to go see his in-laws. And while he was in a place that was later called Bethel, he said he was sleeping. He had a dream. In this dream was a ladder extended from earth all the way to heaven. Ooh, that's exciting. And then he saw angels coming up and going down. And he woke up and he said, I did not know God was here. Truly, th th this is the doorway to heaven. He called that Bethel, Bethel, a house of God. Whoa, that's what we want. We want this a house of God. Not a house of some denomination or organization. Not a house of some man. Come on. No, but a house of God. We want God to show up. Because if God doesn't show up, let's board the few windows we have in this old Jehovah Witness building. <laughs> Lock the doors. Come on. And go away. No, we want it to be a house of God. Woo, hallelujah. I got some more to talk about the house of God being us being the house. But see, pursuing God's manifested presence. So that's where we want to start with and get that in our heart. I believe that you, you, you connect with that. But see, here's the question. How do we get from here to there? How do we get from a simple, mundane, repetitive life that we get from here to a place of experience in the manifested presence of God and not just once in a blue moon, but on a consistent basis. Glory to God. The early church saw this. It wasn't an every day that we find in the book of Acts, but it sure was on a con fairly consistent basis. I tell you, read through the book of Acts and what it should do, it should expand your desire to see more of God, to have more of God, to have the manifested presence of God. Anything less than that. Anything less than a supernatural life, listen to me, anything less than a supernatural life is a superficial life. So Lord, how do we get from here to there? Being transformed from glory to glory. All the amazing things in God. I'm going to just give you three simple steps, all right? Let's not complicate it. Three simple steps. The first one comes with this. Take notes, praise God, is this. See that God is omnipresent. So when we talk about God being omniscient, all-knowing, God is omnipotent, he's all-powerful. These things should not just be theological terms and concepts that we kind of intellectually can kind of connect with, but in a reality, it's like, do we really connect with it? And when we come with the, omni, the, the om, omnipresence of God, meaning God is everywhere, present, not 
not in the sense of like Star Wars that God's in everything. That's a form of pantheism that all is God. No, all is not God. God created all that we see. God isn't in it. He, he exists outside of it. He's the creator. He exists above. He, cre- he exists before. He exists after it. He is God Almighty. Amen? And so it's important that we see that God is first, that he's omnipresent. If we wanted to get to a place of seeing God break through, do you know it actually starts with getting a revelation that God is everywhere? Jeremiah is chapter everywhere. 23. Am I a God near at hand? Of course he is, says the Lord. And not a God far off? He's imminent and he's transcendent. Theologians talk about these terms. Can anyone hide himself in secret places so I shall not see him? Of course not, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? He is not heaven and he is not the earth. He fills it. So when David says, you know, I'm gonna, I want to build a temple for the Lord, and he realizes... But our God is too awesome. He can't live in a man-made temple. Even heaven and earth can't can't, uh, fill him up. Praise God. This is what we need to see. God is everywhere. There is no place that he is not. Look at this from Psalm 139. Where can I go from your spirit? David prophesied. Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, or Sheol in the Hebrew, behold, you are there. God's everywhere. Go ahead and turn to Psalm 139. Let's read a little bit more of that passage in context. David had a revelation from God in this. You can see, praise God, when you look at things like, how come David was so blessed? There are so many very important aspects of why David was a man of God. David here we see, had a great revelation of how big God is and how close he is to at the same time. In Psalm 139, if you're there, say amen. It says in verse 1, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You have known my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Look what he says. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. You try to figure out God, what happens? Your brain goes tilt. Because he is God, he is the creator, and you are not. Turn to somebody and say, he is God and you are not. (laughs) That's good to remind ourselves of that. He is God, I am not. Praise God. And it's like, man, and I think about how big God is, how powerful God is, how much he knows, and that he's everywhere. My brain goes tilt, tilt, tilt. I just have to accept it by faith. Amen? And so David went on and said, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I send into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Pause there for a moment. Notice how David goes from an understanding of how God is everywhere to he goes to sharing his faith and revelation that God is there to break through in my life. A manifested presence of God. Did you catch that? Notice this. Back up a little bit. It says in verse 9, If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there, he doesn't say even there, you are there. Now he switches. He says, even there, your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. See, what's the value of God's presence being everywhere? Things like this. That God is there to lead us. That God is there to hold us. Praise God. 
And then he says, if I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you. Praise God. But the night shines as the day, and the darkness, look at this, the darkness and the light are both alike to you. Woo! Somebody shout, that is our God. Hallelujah. You can read the rest of the passage. You can see in Psalm 139, amazing revelation of God, how small we are, but yet wonderfully created, and God is ready to break through and be God to us personally. Hallelujah. A personal God. Now, church, I, I was raised in a religion, a church growing up, that God was all-powerful, but he's more transcendent. He's a God far off, not a God who's near. And he could pray and pray and recite all kinds of prayers that have been memorized and so forth, and God still seems so distant. God is still everywhere. God still sees everything. God still is all-powerful. But I was untouched, unmoved just like many of you had a similar story. God, God came and broke through. And he showed, I want to be a right now God to you, a personal God, not some distant God that you can uh, have theoretical discussions about, and theological uh, arguments about that who God is and what God, but no, God says, I want to come in and I want to be your God. I want to be your father. Hallelujah. And I want you to be my child. Glory to God. And he said, I shall be a father to you and you shall be a child to me. That's in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Go oh, praise God. The promise that we have. And so we need to, though, first see, if we're going to see a, a, and have faith in a right now God, we need to understand that God isn't sleeping off somewhere on, on some trip. He's not kind of vacant somewhere. That's what Elijah last week I was sharing about. He is, uh, he is taunting the prophets of Baal. Well, surely he's a God. Maybe he's off on a journey. You better go after him, call for him. He'll come back then. No, Elijah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of creation, he is everywhere. He's not off on some journey. He hasn't turned his back and looked away. Do you ever feel like that? It's like, does God see me? I feel unnoticed. I even feel that sometimes. Oh, where is God? It has to start with the understanding, the revelation, that's what it is, of knowing that God is is everywhere and even if i go to the moon god's there and even if i go down to the core of the earth god's there and if i die and my soul goes to heaven or to hell god is everywhere he would not be god if he was not everywhere once again he created everything he he exists outside of time outside of space he is god almighty and once you realize wait a second god's already here he's already here you came to church god was already here before you got here when you're sleeping at night god neither slumbers nor sleeps we looked at god's there he's there in your bedroom why are you going to be afraid come on Yes, God's eyes roam to and fro throughout the whole earth to see who he can show himself strong in the behalf. But he's already there. His eyes see everything. He's looking for people that will recognize he is God, number one. Hallelujah. Even, even Paul, when he came up to the hilltop, Mars Hill, in the book of Acts in Athens, he said, man, you guys are religious people. I've been going through the city and you guys have idols everywhere. I want to talk about the one idol that I saw, though it says to the unknown God. I want to preach to you about the unknown God. Amen. You can, you can use anything to preach to people. I want to preach to you about the unknown God, the, the God who created everything, from where we have come, that he sees all. Glory to God. In him we live, and in him we move, and in him we have our being. That is God. Glory to God. So we need to have that revelation that God is everywhere. Yes, our feelings will say he's distant. He doesn't see. Does he recognize me? One of the greatest lies the devil has is he comes and tells you God doesn't care and he doesn't see. By the way, 
God is, we're talking about God. God is omnipresent. Do you know the devil is not omnipresent? Amen. Sometimes we talk and we give too much credit to the devil. Oh, the devil's doing this. The devil's doing something there and there and there and there and there. Well, the devil is a created being. He cannot be everywhere at once. There is only one being in, in, in the whole universe that can. That's God, our God. Glory to God. Now, the devil has a big old bunch, right? And his bunch is not exhaust. It's not an exhaustive list. So that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of times you kind of coast through something because you're not being attacked because he's trying to divide his forces, going after other people that have bigger targets on their back. But the devil is not everywhere. He is not omnipresent. It's blasphemous to even think and comprehend that. But God is, so he sees. And when we sleep, he's there. And when we wake, he's there. Glory to God. When we go to school, he's there. When we're driving through Milwaukee traffic, he's there. Come on. He's there when we get pulled over by the policeman. He's there. He's there when we go to the grocery store. Amen. He's there when we have a few words with the clerk. He's there, right? He's there when we go to the gas pump and it's two fifty dollars a gallon and he's still there when it's $5 a gallon. He's still there. He's still bigger than it all. Amen? Get rid of your sour attitude. Just go and vote the way you should, okay? But get rid of the sour attitude, okay? And so God is everywhere. He's there when a husband and wife are doing well and talking nice to one another, and he's also there when they're bickering. He's there when the child is acting real uh, uh, submissive, kind, and obedient to the parents, and, and he's there when the child is acting up. Isn't that right? I found out that, that God was there, and I realized after the fact God was there when I was acting good, but he was also there when my dad was lighting up my behind. Or the principal, or the teacher. See, I, I grew up in old school. Some people have never been spanked in their life. <coughs> Kelly Garcia. <laughs> I've been threatening her for 35 years. I'm going to spank you. If you don't change that. <laughs> but God sees it all. Isn't that right? He's there when the food tastes good. He's there when the food doesn't taste good. He's there when the service seems kind of similar and mundane. And he's there, praise God, when, when it's like we're running around with fire coming out of our head and our eyes. Amen. He's there. Amen. When, you, when you've heard a message for the hundredth time on that topic, and he's there when you hear it for the first time. He's there when you wake up and you get on your knees and say, Lord, I bless you today. I, I yield myself to you today. And he's there when you lay your head down at, the night, at night. Amen? God is omnipresent. So we want to see the manifested presence of God, but it starts, church, with great, getting a greater revelation of, wait a second, God is everywhere. Do you know revival will take place when we just recognize these points? God sees everything. It produces the fear of the Lord. When we recognize God's all-powerful, then we'll stop acting like Chicken Little running around with our heads cut off. And when we recognize that God is everywhere, then we won't think that, oh my goodness, where can I go to find some help? Which brings us to our second point. So a greater revelation, number one, of seeing, realizing that God is omnipresent. And then secondly, let's get this right. The second is to practice the presence of God. There's a Catholic monk probably about 400 or so years ago that came up with some writings on practicing the presence of God. Had some interesting stuff in there. But the concept, you know what? When I became a Christian, what I'm sharing today and this aspect of God has truly, honestly, been the most important thing in my life. To know that I can meet with God. That God is there and I can, I can actually experience a practicing of God's presence. Look at a couple verses. I want these to really touch your heart today. In Psalm 16, verse 8, I am always thinking of the Lord. And because He is so near... I never need to stumble or fall. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
David, we're talking about dwelling in the temple. And there wasn't even a temple there. David saw this. I can't always go to the tabernacle. I'm going to bring the tabernacle to me. Let's bring the ark into the city. Let's pitch a tent for it. Let's have all the singers and so forth be around here, and let's experience God here instead of having to go miles away over there. David had this heart, and he said, I want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What kind of house is he talking about? Love that Hillsong song, we'll dwell in the house of the Lord. Are we talking about this house? This is a house of God. Amen. There's nothing wrong with calling it that. But to dwell in the house of God, to realize, David said, man, God wants to, wants to be right there where I'm at. Listen, when we come to the new covenant, really he's getting, he's getting advanced, advanced notice on the new covenant. That Paul wrote this, hey, don't you know this? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, and you are not your own. Your body, praise God. So we talk about dwelling. So when we're talking about dwelling in the house of God, it's talking about dwelling in his presence. And it doesn't have to be some remote place. Oh, you know, I got to get to church for God to hear me. God wants us to know that we can, we can talk to God and we can experience God wherever we are. Sure, there's an added blessing for gathering, and the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Hebrews 10, 25, as the manner of some is. Some don't have the revelation of that. That's why they're, they're, they're not going to church when they say they're born again. But said, don't forsake that. You see, there is, because Jesus said, Jesus said, if two or more gathered in my name, there am I. But you can be all alone and never be alone. And so when I became a Christian, I realized I'm not alone. It's the most amazing thing ever. It was so different from the religion I was brought up with. It's like God is there. He is the ever-present healer. The ever-present help in a time of trouble, as the Bible says. In Psalm 27, he is there. He is the, he is the ever-present psychologist, ready to listen to me. Bible says in Proverbs that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And so when you're looking at man, I want to experience and practice the presence of God. You want to see the manifested presence of God. God doing amazing things like in the book of Acts. He shook the place. Glory to God. Amazing tangible things God breaking through into the natural is first see that he is first everywhere but then start practicing the fact that God is there Hebrews chapter 13 says this I will never leave you he's quoting the Old Testament I will never leave you nor forsake you God's there I truly believe it's a lack of understanding a lack of revelation where any Christian feels alone now all of us feel that at some times maybe abandoned so people will abandon you every single person you know you'll find out they're not there when you think you need them newsflash they're not god everybody say it say they're not god why why are you getting so upset treating them and expecting them to be god and they're holding hurt and bitter feelings to somebody because you weren't there when I went through this thing. Kids will say that about parents. Spouses will say that about other spouses. Come on. It's like, man, friends will say that to friends. Listen, God is there. He is my best friend. And so, praise God, I realize there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have friendships. We should. God wants us to have friendships. There's wonderful value in that. But man, we need to understand that God, God is that person. And, and the Bible says to abide in, Jesus even echoed this. He said, abide in me. Let my words abide in you. Abide, dwell in me. Let me dwell in you. In the first Thessalonians chapter five, look at this. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Notice what he says there. He says, pray without ceasing. How can we do that if we can only pray at church? How can we do that if we only have that little prayer nook at home where I read my Bible? You know, daily times are great, but they were never meant to be. I had my daily time with God, and now I can go ahead and live by myself the rest of the day. 
Daily time is supposed to be like tuning yourself up, like an orchestra and the instrumentalists, they're, they're making, they're giving one last time where they're, they're syncing up and they're, they're, they're checking whether, you know, everything's in tune and so forth, is that we get in tune in the morning. But why are we getting in tune in the morning? To walk with God, talk with God, meet with God, know that he's there, know that he won't disappear. You get to lunchtime, where's God? You get to that problem at work, where's God? He abandoned me. He didn't abandon us. Practice the presence of God. And if we learn to have a, a, a sense of praying without ceasing, how can you do that? Have a sense of praying without ceasing. Yes, speaking in other tongues has a great part of that. But praying without ceasing, in other words, that you can talk to God anywhere. Hallelujah. You can talk to God in the most craziest places. As long as you don't talk too loud, people won't know you're crazy crazy for God. You know, so I can talk to God in the grocery store. I can talk to God at the movie theater. I can talk to God watching, to a, watching a ball game. I can talk, you can talk to God anywhere. Pray without ceasing. How do you do that? You can only do that if you practice the presence of God. God is everywhere, but then God sees me and I want to communicate with him. Amen. Isaiah, one last verse, Isaiah 26, 3 that God will keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. That's practicing the presence of God. So oftentimes we lack peace simply because we've lost the sense of the presence of God. Which brings us to the very last point. And I've kind of run out of time, so I'm just going to preach real fast on this one. Which is, is really the, the core of it all, hallelujah, is this. Pursuing God's manifested presence. What do we do then? Pray and believe. Pray and believe. What did the early church do? They prayed and they believed in what they prayed. Hallelujah. When, when it says in James chapter 4, draw near to God and I will, he will draw near to you. Ooh, what is that? Part of that is praying, seeking God. He who seeks shall find. What are we seeking? We're not seeking that God is there. He's already there. We are seeking for a manifested presence of God. And there's nothing wrong, church, at times that you might feel that you're, you're distant from the Lord and you just don't feel him. You say, Lord, I, just, I, I pray for a, a, a special touch today. You know, there's nothing wrong. Don't let anybody tell you that. What do you say? I'm praying, Lord, break through. I know you're here. I believe that. And it's good always to say that first. Lord, I know you're, but Lord, I just, I just need another touch from heaven today. Glory to God. I believe that's a reason and something we should pray for when we come. Lord, we want to have fresh, new encounters with heaven. Glory to God. I want to experience God. I want him to shake me. I want him to move me. I want him to wrap his loving arms around me and hold me. I want him to be uh, in a fresh new way. My shield, my buckler, my rock, my high tower. Glory to God. He's there. I want to know. Give me another confirmation, Lord. I don't need it uh, uh, because I already believe. But oh, Lord, I'd love to have it. And praise God, I want to know and I want to see. And praise God, I want to hear and I want to turn visions and dreams glory to God breaking through in these last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh I will break through in other words and my sons and daughters shall prophesy young men old men visions dreams praise God supernatural breakthrough God's manifested presence amen we pursue that Lord in Jesus name let's all stand hallelujah I just invite you to pray a simple prayer say dear God forgive me I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus Christ to follow you all the days of my life. Just pray that. Say, Father, forgive me. Oh, God Almighty, cleanse me. Make me your child today. Give me a new heart. May I be what Jesus said, be born again today. Ooh, I become a new person with a new beginning, new start. I surrender that today. I believe in you, Jesus. You took my place, and I believe that now. I accept that. In your name I pray. Amen. God turned me around.